what is the motivation of a person to be a tax inspector? Okay? Salaries are very low. So what is the motivation? Okay? Probably you know that. Okay? So something needs to change in the culture, and that must be driven by the state. The state wants to change the culture of how the uh, tax official deals with the businesses. And there should be certain code of behavior so that they, they enforce it. As I mentioned, personal income tax, the flat 10%, that is fantastic, okay? Austria, 50% the highest. There's progressive tax rate. So highly paid manager, 50% of his salary goes away. So what does it mean? If you get paid 100,000 euro as a director of the company, in Kazakhstan, you bring home 90, okay? Maybe a little bit less because of social payments. The same job in Austria, you bring home 50. You're half poorer than the that is really great measure. So we are here. We are really competitive. Netherlands, that is like also 45 percent, almost everywhere in Europe. So that's amazing measure. That's our strength. Corporate income tax rate, 20 percent. That's also quite competitive. Most of these countries, you know, they don't have much lower. There is exceptional. Cyprus, just 10 percent. Ireland, 12 percent. But the rest of them are 20, 25. So that is also competitive. Exemptions, and this is actually exemption on capital gain dividends. In 2008, I was invited to, the, to, to ask Astana to consult the Ministry of uh, Finance with the drafting of a new tax code. And uh, they, they asked me, do you have any suggestions? And I said, look, guys, you, you were talking about being regional financial center. The only thing you do is an incentive for the stock exchange. A lot of business finance happens out of the stock exchange. There is private investments, private equity business, investment funds. So consider these exemptions. Exemption of dividend, exemption of capital gain, if certain conditions are met. So I told them or showed them European example. Okay, there will be, let's say, you need to have a holding period of a certain duration, let's say three years, two years, one year, and then a certain percentage of shares you own. So not everybody gets it, but somebody who owns a substantial amount, at least 10% or 20%. Okay? So look at it, oh, that's great. They adopted it, but they adopted it without those conditions. So no holding period, no shareholding. So th that was another extreme, that idea was fantastic, and it's a good idea, but the adoption meant that the government lost a lot of revenue. I think they lost a lot of uh, revenue from adopting it fully without those conditions. But we have it already in place. Now they realize they need the conditions, so gradually they are introducing conditions and making the, the, the exemption more restrictive. But it's in place, which is also great. And it applies to capital gains and dividends both inbound, coming into Kazakhstan, and outbound, so that's great. We do have tax incentive for investments. Uh, although less in the past, we had these special investment agreements, but they are out, out they're, they are zoomed out. We have only special incentives for accelerated appreciation. But we have special economic zones, which can be also attractive measure, even for tax planning and all the jurisdiction uh, idea. Why do I think, so I wouldn't be standing here if I wouldn't believe that this could be the case. So I'm not here as a critique and saying it's impossible. I actually believe that this is something we should seriously consider for the future of this country, unless we want to be producing cars or competing with Chinese or Indians. We, cannot, we, are, we are not able to do that, okay? Uh, so the idea should be that we need to think of high added value or wealth for the job. So that's why I think this is a very relevant topic. And when you look on the region, I think Kazakhstan is in a competitive situation compared to other countries. So in my opinion, it's one of the most progressive economies in the CIS, not only Central Asia. Uh, the, it has regionally competitive ease of doing business factor. So there is a certain factor which is calculated. It takes into consideration different aspects. Opening the company, getting the licenses, etc. cetera. The, the, the factor is 47, uh, 47, point, 47, okay? Compared to 77 of the average in the region. So we are already above average. So we're doing, I think, really well. Or we started very well. But we need to continue. We need to be number, we need to be 20 or something like that. Okay, to be really, for people to move and I'm here to, to do that holding business from Kazakhstan. Uh, then uh, also, the customs union is another important factor. Why? Uh, customs union, it takes away certain borders. Before we had Russia, Kazakhstan, Belarus. Each country was a different market. If I wanted to enter the market, I had to, I can sign them. If you, if, you, if you want to enter a market, you, you would have to pay customs duties to enter the market. Customs duties is like a 
like it's an artificial barrier. It's like a fence, like a Chinese wall you, you build around a country. You want to come with your product on this marketplace, you have to pay a fee to the government to allow you to do so. When we created Customs Union, what happened? We, we demolished that fence. Kazakhstan had a Chinese wall around, now it, we blew it up on the Russian border. Okay? Now, anything from Russia can move to Kazakhstan free of customs duty, and vice versa. We can export to Russia. But who is producing more? <coughs> what, what we are actually producing? <coughs> when you think about it, hardly anything. Okay? So the question was, was it timely? There is a lot of issues that we need to consider about it, but, but okay, we can criticize the past. Let's look to the future. How we can benefit from it? If we can start producing, and we can export to Russia, then we will be the winners. Otherwise, we'll be the losers. Because what does it mean? Before we would at least, we go to the shop, and we choose based on prices. Maybe the German product, the price was the same like the Russian one because of the customer's duty, and you would take the German because of the quality. Yeah? Now we go to the, to the shop, oops, the Russian one is 20% cheaper now than the German one. Which one do you buy? You start compromising, you start buying lower quality because it's cheaper, okay? So there is some of the aspects, I mean, in mind now, but the important thing I wanted to say is, is the investments. Now we don't need to invest in, you know, as a, if you wanted to be competitive, the German producer wants to go to Kazakhstan, what he will do? He will open an operation. He will invest money to open a small factory. He will employ people here so he can produce the shampoo locally to avoid a customs duty. Now, before they would invest in Kazakhstan, in Russia, in Belarus. Once you blew up those fences, you don't need to invest in all the three countries. One is enough. Only one country is sufficient and it can supply for the rest of the region. The only cause is transportation. But you avoid all the customs duties. You don't have to pay any. What happens? One of these countries will be winner. One of these countries will attract the FDI. The other two will be losing it because you don't need to invest all of those. Who will be that winner? That's a big question. Okay? It can be Kazakhstan, but we need to align the policies. We need to work on it to attract the foreign investment into Kazakhstan. Okay, but that's a, that, that, can, that can be a plus if you can take advantage, or it can be a danger if we if we fail to take advantage of it. Some existing institutions like a regional finance center of Almaty, but if you heard, it was something big a few years ago. Now it's a small office of a few people. I think somebody gave up on this idea. We are giving up on the idea of being regional financial center. So the question is, did we give up, or or not completely? We have, uh, there was even like, it was consideration of a special economic zone called Almaty Financial Center. I think that one is also almost forgotten by now. Uh, we have stock exchange, probably the best stock exchange still in our region, but without further incentive, in, like, further kind of investing into it, it will not continue. I think it will disappear in favor of Hong Kong, UK, any other stock exchange in the world. We have still a number of proactive businessmen, maybe future generations, some of you will be the future businessmen in this room, investors, bankers. There are a lot of young, talented people, and they are coming also from other countries. They are leaving Uzbekistan because of the political situation. They are leaving Tajikistan. They are coming here. So there is some geo kind of a political plus, the human element, which plays in favor of Almaty or Kazakhstan to be that, that, that center. Uh, modern education, we have Kazakhstan has made amazing investment with the Poloshak investment. It costs a lot of money, but all the people who come back educated in the Western universities, no other country has it. Other thing is Kiman. That's another important legacy in the whole equation. And now also Nazarbayev University, which will hopefully produce another flow of uh, amazingly educated young people. As I mentioned, the high competitive element is the low personal income tax. Even for foreigners, even foreign managers coming and working here will get the same benefit. We developed the Islamic financing rules. Uh, we have the first Islamic uh, banks also functioning in place. What is very important is logistics. How do you get to Kazakhstan? How do you get to your business in Uzbekistan and other countries? We have very well functioning regional airline. And we have very good hotel network, at least in some of the major cities in Alma. So the hospitality business functions. So we have a lot of the infrastructure. So what I wanted to say, at some points I'm critical, we need to do work harder. At some points we already achieved a lot. But without having a clear vision that we want to achieve it, we will not achieve much more. Okay? So what I think is very important that the, that the government and people need to think, do we want to go in this direction? 
tax considerations I will already not be repeating because uh, I think I mentioned a lot of it. Uh, one of the issues, however, is we are planning 20% withholding tax on payments to the offshore jurisdictions. Some major financial centers are on the blacklist, like Hong Kong. Okay, and that creates a problem because if I have my holding jurisdiction in Kazakhstan, mm, how do I get my money to, to, to Hong Kong? That's a problem. So we need to consider maybe some exemptions for it. <coughs> some picture here. Uh, this shows you the treaty network. Tax fees, as I showed you at the beginning of this presentation, they give you special incentives or benefits. Reuse withholding tax rates, allocate a taxing rate to one country only. So they are very important to sustain or support the idea of a holding jurisdiction. We are doing not bad compared to other countries in our region. Our network covers most of uh, our region and even North America. But let's compare with Austria, which is our competitor. Okay? They are covering other parts of the world and other continents. Uh, even if we think Kazakhstan only as a country where people invest, even from that point, we don't have the major Australia. It's also important to invest. Uh, South Africa. Uh, other countries in Asia, they are investors into Kazakhstan, we don't have tax treaties with them. What does it mean? If the investor comes from that country, he doesn't go straight to Kazakhstan. He opens a company in Austria or in the Netherlands to come into Kazakhstan because they will use their treaty network to come in. The same way for us, if, you want, if nothing else, if for the rich people in Kazakhstan, if you guys will be investing into Africa, you cannot go directly because you will lose a lot of money on the withholding tax. If you want to invest anywhere else in Latin America or Australia, you will not go directly. You will go through another holding <coughs> jurisdiction. The treaty network can support investments into Kazakhstan, but also our investments outside. It works both ways. Traditionally, Kazakhstan, of course, was not. Now we are talking about new era. Okay, 20 years ago, this country was a completely different situation as it is today. Okay, it was a young baby which tried to survive. Okay, now it's a young adult. Okay, and and now we are looking outside. We are looking. There are, I, I know many people from Kazakhstan who are investing also outside of Kazakhstan. Our treaty policy was not is not based on this concept. It was based on a protective concept. Protect this little baby. Okay. Now we are expanding. We are becoming, you know, as I've said, expensive element. And especially if for the holding jurisdiction, you need to be you need to be aggressive. You need to be taking taxing rights from the other countries and take it to your country. So the policy needs to be. Re we need to rethink it. So uh, with the help of the team, we put here some comparisons here. Uh, and they'll be comparing the coverage of tax treaties between Kazakhstan and Central Asia. Because of course, I don't think Kazakhstan should be holding jurisdiction for the whole world. We will keep it to the Dutch, we will keep it to uh, Cyprus and other countries. But we can be this regional holding jurisdiction. That, that is my aspiration. And we are not doing so bad because when you see Kazakhstan has tax treaty with every single country in our region. The only competitor here is Austria, who is keeping up with us. Everybody else is behind. Even Russia is behind because of political reasons with Georgia. Uh, Netherlands, although very famous holding jurisdiction, they, are, they don't have a proper treaty coverage yet. Our Emirates, they are far behind. Singapore, they are, they are trying hard but still not there. Georgia, also not fully there, but Georgia is really awakening. They started to create special special concepts, uh, exemptions in their tax system for, for international finance companies. The, the whole concept is to create a holding company jurisdiction. Okay? So they are already doing it. If we don't do it, somebody else will do it. Okay? The question is who will do it faster and better. Uh, normally I would go in more detail on the tax treaties, but I realize many of you are not tax specialists, so I will save you of this. You must be already feeling tired. But uh, if you meet somewhere else, I will go through the details of, of this in the next slide. They basically give you, there are treaty rates or rules which will decide whether a treaty is good or not so good for the holding company or the investor. It's too complicated for today and it's Friday 8.40 almost. Um, maybe I will explain only this one table. It says here, shared or exclusive. I will explain what does it mean. Tax treaties uh, are like rules for sharing, I call it pizza. Or a pie. The pizza or pie is a tax revenue. It's a tax that will be collected by the government. These treaties are between two governments, and they basically meet at a table and say how much of a future pizza, which will be cooked, some who knows when, will be eaten by you or by me. Okay? And and you don't you need to have also vision what will be in ten or five years. 
because when we negotiated those treaties 20 years ago or 10 years ago, we were thinking we are this little baby, we'll be always little baby, we have to be protected, protected of ourselves. India is very smart, it can be our example. India was also kind of a developing country, but they were smart. To the big boys, they were, I'm a little boy, they were protected. They, pro they, they would have a taxi which is protecting India, protecting India from, from the other kind of means. Give me a little bit more of that cake, okay? To the, to, the, to the countries which are like smaller boys in India, they are like, they are, okay, give me more of that cake. They take it to them, okay? They behave very smartly in that respect. And that is probably, that, that is the logic we can start following. To countries where we will never be investing much, we should, but who, which are investing here, we should be reserving taxing rights so we can tax a little bit more or take a little bit more of that cake in Kazakhstan. For countries where we will probably most likely invest, we should start thinking, oh, we, we should be reserving the taxing right to us. If done in the treaties through these rights, they are either shared, we, we share the cake, or it's exclusive. I eat all the cake by myself, okay? And that's what you, that, that, that's, that's the beautiful part if you have the cake for yourself. You know? Compare the treaties here. Netherlands, they eat the cake as much as they can by themselves, okay? Austria is pretty much doing the same. Kazakhstan, because they have this you know, baby thinking in their mind, in many places it would like share because they thought it would be good for us. Actually, it is the other way around, uh, especially with the countries in our region because we are talking about little boys, okay? So uh, you see there, there is some idea behind it that the share, it is specifically about sale of shares. In other words, if I have a holding company in Kazakhstan, this holding company will own, uh, let's say, Georgian company or Chinese company. If I will sell those shares, what happens? Capital gains. Those are taxable. If this rule is shared, it means Georgia will eat a piece of the cake, and I can eat also part of the cake. If I have this rule which is exclusive, it means uh, Azerbaijan cannot eat anything of the cake. It's all mine. But what I do now, I'll say, but I'm a good boy and big boy. I will not eat it. I'll give it to the foreign investor. I exempt it. That's the beauty of it. Okay. So you take, a, you take away your taxing right, you take it to yourself, and then you do not tax it. Double non-taxation. And that's what the investors want. That's the whole idea about a, a participation exemption. You exempt the capital gains, you exempt the dividends, okay? But you don't let the others tax it as well. You take it from them, and you give the benefit to the investor. That's why they love the idea of the holding jurisdiction. So right now, if I come back with a picture from the beginning of the presentation, and I put Kazakhstan as holding jurisdiction, what happens? If this was coming from Azerbaijan, there is, ten, not, there is not five, but 10% we be holding tax rate. Again, our little boy mine from 20 years ago. Uh, so we are, that is already not very good. You come to Kazakhstan, that's good. That is the thing I recommended you know, 2008, four years ago. That's still in place, that's super. But then money goes out from Kazakhstan to Hong Kong, 20% we hold that tax. You will not use Kazakhstan, okay? Because it's 30 percent loss. From this 100 million, I end up paying 30 of tax. It's better for me to go straight from Azerbaijan to Hong Kong, I pay only 20. Kazakhstan is waste of time and waste of money for me. I will not use Kazakhstan as holding jurisdiction for the region. Okay? So then that is because of the 10% withholding tax on the offshore. However, <coughs> otherwise it could be zero. We have actually zero exemption. Part of it is already in the law. The problem is that, of course, I don't think we should be giving zeros going to Cayman and all other places, but you should think carefully how we treat major financial centers, because then we disqualify ourselves as a suitable holding jurisdiction. So we are, we are halfway, I would say. So, if this is really a dream, what is the next steps? I think we need to review this offshore treatment. So which countries do we keep on that list? Or we can keep many of the countries, but we consider some special exemptions which can qualify. For example, the companies listed on the stock exchange. So we know it's not tax avoidance or tax abuse. It's actually the way of structuring investment. Uh, we should reconsider the tax ready policy because we need to change this small baby mind into young adult attitude, like in the other should start reserving the exclusive taxing rights to Kazakhstan and then exempting them on the qualifying exemptions. We should be extending the treaty network because you see, you know, we are, not, we don't have very good coverage. It's good regionally, but for the rest of the world, it's still not suitable. Whenever they would invest here, they would need additional 
country, another holy jurisdiction to come into Kazakhstan. Domestic tax system, we should really make this ruling system war, that I told you these letters of tax authorities. How are the countries deal with them? It costs money. And you need smart people to be able to do it, because you cannot have a mechanical engineer who becomes a tax inspector, write a letter and tell this is the way it is. Oops, I made a mistake, sorry. This doesn't work. It must be educated person. Somebody from Kima, which says, tax specialization on a diploma, <laughs> will sit down and say, this is the way it should be. Okay? And it's binding. Okay? So we need to have qualified people who will work in a tax authority. Now, the, the jobs which are offered by the tax authority today are $200 job a month. Okay? Well, that's what many of our graduates can soon earn in a day working in a business. Why would they go to the tax authority? What Chile did, another developing country, already 10 years ago, they did a major reform of public sector. They realized, hmm, if we don't have the smart people working in the public sector, we will never do better. We will be always a mediocre. So what they did, they paid competitive salaries in the public sector. What happened? People resigned their jobs in the big four. They moved to work for the government because it's fantastic jobs. It's amazing jobs. You create policy. You're writing laws. That's fantastic way of working. The problem <coughs> is the salary. So, uh, and of course, we should consider less frequent changes to tax law. And if you, but it's natural that the law changes, so we cannot say we should not change it anymore. But at least for the elements which deal with the holding companies, we should have a policy: don't touch it. Okay? Let's make these rules, make them good, not abusable, and then we leave it alone, so that nobody has a fear that it will change again next year. Okay? So there will be some of my ideas. Uh, to the end of my presentation, I want to thank the team who supported me because. I would not be able to put all of these presentations together. It's a team from our research center. Uh, there is Anwar, Jeanette, and Mirror, who made a great contribution to this presentation. So let's give them a hand. And thank you for attention. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them, um, answer them. Yes? producers of juices, if they import our Kazakhstani juice to Russia, there is special tax rules which actually discriminate the Kazakhs. Okay? The whole idea about a customs union is kind of freedom of movement of goods. Good. Now, Kazakhstani juice comes to the border and they say, okay, there is no customs duty, but you have to pay VAT. And by <laughs> the way, because you're Kazakh, the VAT is 18%. <laughs> for, for Russian, it's 10 Okay. It makes the Kazakh juice immediately 9% more expensive, which means that the Kazakh producer has to either give up the profit, becomes less attractive to export, or simply will not sell his juice in Russia. Okay? So Russians are smart. They are discriminating the, the non-Russian products. It's a hidden discrimination. It's not so obvious, because it's not called custom duty, but it's a hidden custom duty. Okay? Why don't we play the same game? Okay? Uh, you can still use other instruments uh, to be able, you know, it's, it's very early stage of custom uh, union. Now, I'm telling you actually some dirty tricks, how you can do it. And that, that's what you can, that's how you can protect your market. One way is being this negative <coughs> way, discrimination, but actually it's prohibited by the treaty. And soon, soon after we start doing it, Russians will start to complain, but we can say, look, we do the same, okay? So first drop it, and we will drop it here as well. Okay, so that's the way we can deal. The positive is special incentives for our company. Tax rate is 15%. Now it's announced it will be 15. 
sorry, it's 20, should be 15. Russia is still 22. These differentials will create lower tax costs for companies to operate that can allow a little bit of the competitiveness. I think we need to invest in infrastructure. We are sitting on billions of dollars from oil and gas, okay? Now, what do we do with those billions? I suggest we build roads, we build proper railways, we, in, we invest in being able to import this stuff into Russia, okay? So, uh, I, would, I would suggest, I agree with the sentiment, but I would say it's a fact. Now let's let's fight it. Let, let's 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 make it let, let's make the best out of it. Other questions? Yes. Now, what do you think? <laughs> I think you are in negative position. Oh! <laughs> uh, you see, I, I'm the one who, who started to talk about this concept in Kazakhstan. I'm the one who said, let's become a holding jurisdiction. I'm the one who came to the Ministry of Finance and said, put it into law. They did it, okay? But the problem is, it's not only the people sitting in the Ministry of Finance. It's, it's, there are systemic things we need to do now, okay? So I'm pushing to the next level. And I cannot be just positive if things are not positive. I have to be constructive, okay? I have to say, if something doesn't work, I cannot say it's, it's perfect, because it's not true, okay? I, I have a dream, and I shared a dream with you tonight, and I think we have a long way to achieve it. And we will have to work really hard, okay? That's my message. So I apologize if I sounded negative. I actually love this idea, because it will create jobs for you, okay? And uh, it will be beautiful jobs because it will be all tax advisors, lawyers, directors, okay? Uh